Greetings folks, we're going to take a look at the digital read function and direct access via the pin registers in this video. So first, let's take a look at the digital read function itself. Here's the doc for it. It's very simple to uh, use. The function is digital read and you give it an Arduino pin number, one of the pins on the headers on the board. It returns to you either a high or a low, a logic high or a logic low. So logic low is zero. A logic high is any non-zero value. Okay, so here's a simple example. This just uh, reflects the value on an LED of the input pin. So the very first thing we do is we're using pin mode over here to set the input output mode, right? So I've got an LED, which is we're going to drive. That's output. Um, input mode is the switch. And then, so that's a one shot deal. Then down here in the loop, we simply read the value, right? There's the input pin. We get val, and then pump that into the digital write function. So we either get a high or a low to turn the LED on and off. So it just reflects the state of the switch. Fairly easy to use. Let's take a look at the code itself. This turns out to be fairly straightforward too, and kind of familiar, because we see a lot of this is the uh, translation from the Arduino pin into the appropriate bit mask and register on that processor. So just like in the uh, digital write function, just like in the um, data direction register, the pin mode uh, function, we have the same kind of thing. We have to take that pin number, translate it into a, a timer value, translate it into a bit mask, translate it into a, a port value. So, you know, we're going to find out is this port B, is it port C? Um, you know, the, remember the bit mask is all zeros except for a one in the particular bit position. So if it was uh, bit zero, in other words, the LSB, it would be all zeros except for a one, right? The hex value would be one, right? All zeros and a one. Okay, um, the digital pin to timer thing gives us back a, uh, uh, a pound defined code for the timer that it is or is not on. Now we go in and we just do a check to see if we um, have a logical, sensible pin, right? The, did you ask for um, pin number 136, which doesn't exist? So if you did, this comes back and says, hey, this is not a pin. Get the heck out of here, right? Return low. Then we check the timer. Is it not, not on timer? In other words, is it a timer? If it is, turn off that timer, right? Timers are used for pulse width modulation, something we'll look at uh, in future work. But that function itself is fairly straightforward. It's just a big switch case. So timer gives you back, right? Um, this digital pin to timer gives you back a, uh, a defined thing like this, timer 0A, timer 0B, and so forth. And this code just, just clears a bit in the timer counter control register returns. So it's just turning it off. That's all it does. Right? And, if, and if it doesn't find one of these, then you're going to get back this thing that it's, hey, it's not on the timer. All right, so the, the, the stuff of interest, right, the, the powerful stuff is this right here. So port input register, this thing is literally referring to things like pin B, pin C, pin D, the actual input ports. So we get the value of that port, and that's an 8-bit value, and then we end it with the bit mask. So using that example of the LSB, bit zero being the bit of interest, what ends up happening is when you AND this, all of the other bits, the top seven bits disappear because you're ANDing them with all zeros and it's just the bottom bit. So if that happens to be set, right? In other words, if, if the input literally is high, then this is a one, this is a one, and you get, of course, a true value return high. On the other hand, if that uh, physical input is, a, is low, then you get a zero, you end it with one, you get zero, you return low. Okay, so fairly straightforward, but there's a wrinkle. And that's physical problems with the switch. So physical switches have an issue called debounce, bouncing. You know, you have a, a, a little mechanical actuator there, and it uh, is thrown, it hits a contact, and it literally bounces, you know, like you drop a ball. Same thing happens. 
So it makes and it breaks contact repeatedly. Now, in this little oscilloscope shot, this is 200 microseconds per division. So you can see that this jitter, right, this sort of jagged waveform can exist for, you know, over a millisecond. All depends on the construction of the, uh, of the switch, the kind of switch that you're using. But these are all false triggers. These are all false on and offs. So we need to get around this somehow. It's possible to do it in software, but uh, a fairly straightforward hardware circuit looks something like this. Um, we basically have an RC network, and um, this is going to create a either a, a charge or a discharge on this capacitor when the switch is opened or closed. Right. So if it's open, basically the power source here charges up the cap and you get a high. And if you shut the switch, it has to discharge through this 470. Um, the end result is you get a nice smooth waveform. Even though the switch is bouncing a little bit, right, the charge or discharge on the cap is fairly smooth. And then we square it up with the Schmidt trigger and this goes into the uh, microcontroller, right, goes into the Arduino. So that's a nice little circuit. All right, so what about direct, ac direct access, right? We're always talking about direct access. So the, uh, the th things that you would do, um, steps one and two over here would typically be done in, inside the setup routine. It's sort of a done once thing, right? You would clear the desired data direction register bit either directly, in other words, accessing DDR, um, or using the pin mode function, right? So you want to activate that uh, input mode. So that's you clear the bit. Um, if you're going to use a pull-up resistor, so you have a passive switch out there, rather than an active circuit, like, uh, you know, a logic circuit, um, you want the pull-up resistor, you need to set that same bit in the associated register. So, for example, if I'm looking at um, bit zero of, of uh, port B, then the data direction register, that's DDRB, so I need to clear bit zero of DDRB. If I want the pull-up resistor, I'm going to have to set bit zero of port B, right? So that's a one-shot sort of deal. Then whenever we need to read it in our loop function, we would simply take that pin register, in this case that would be pin B, and we and it with the bit mask. In this case, we would and it with hex one, all zeros in a one. And that essentially obliterates all the other bits, and we're just left with an um, uh, an anding between the, the bottom pin register bit and um, a 1. So we get back whatever the pin register bit is. All right, so some examples. I want to read bit 4, which is a hex 1, 0, on port B with pull-up. So in the setup, first we have to clear the data direction register bits. Okay, so we and it with the complement. That's how we clear the bit. And then to set the associated bit pattern, um, for port B, right, we just do a simple ORing, right, so that enables the pull-up. Then, when I want to get the value, we simply take pin B, remember, it's pin in for input, port out for output. So we got to take pin B and it with the, with the bit mask to see what we get. So in this case, um, if bit 4 in pin B is set, we'll have that and it with bit 4 over here, and we'll get a true value. Right. I don't get 1, I get true. In other words, I get a non-zero value. What we really get is the bit mask. All right. So don't test for 1, test for true. In other words, non-zero or exists. Another way to say it. Okay. Multiple bits. Okay, so we extend this. I want to look at two different bits. All right. I want to see if one or the other of these things happens to be set, as an example. Um, so bits 0 and 4. So that's the bit pattern 001, 0001, which is a hex 1, 1. So activate the input mode. So data direction register B, and it with the complement. I want to disable the pull-ups. So we need to clear, again, uh, the associated bits in port B. Okay? So again, and it with the complement. Then to retrieve the data bits, same deal. Take pin B, and it with the bit pattern with the mask. And again, value is going to give us something back, you know. Um, we might have one of them, both of them, right, one or the other. Um, and we just checked for true, and that'll tell me if either of those things happens to be set. If I want to check them independently, 
then we would still do this part up here, but um, to get the, the different bits, right, I just and it with that particular bit. All right, to get um, bit zero, we just and it with a mask for bit zero. To get bit four, we and it with a mask for bit four. All right, and that's how I can separate those out. And that's how you read on the input.